With the return of the old world come the warriors of chaos, and among their endless hordes are the corrupted forms of the chaos dragons. Available as a mount option for chaos lords and sorcerer lords, it's an impressive centerpiece for your army. But that classic chaos dragon model is getting a little longer in the tooth, and that's if you can still get your hands on one. So let's bring this model up to date and kit bash a chaos dragon for the old world. Jonas Cripborn formed the basis of this model. From the Age of Sigmar range, this plastic dragon is imposing while still being compact enough to fit within the constraints of a 60 by 100 mm base. After removing the required parts to build the torso and legs, they were cleaned of their tabs and mold lines. The first modification involved removing the distinctly Sigmarite iconography from the chest armor. This was carefully trimmed back with a scalpel until the bulk of the raised details were removed. From here, a combination of a filing and scraping were used to further smooth out the armor. Once flattened, the torso and legs were glued together as per the instructions. One of the most distinctive aspects of the Chaos Dragon is its twin heads. This would also be the most involved part of the conversion as well, which saw me kick things off by cutting away the existing neck ahead of the armor plates. This was trimmed back and smoothed out so that it followed the line of the armor and the leather strap that wrapped around the neck. The twin necks would be sourced from the War Hydra kit. Formerly a Dark Elves unit, this is now part of the Citadel of Sigmar line and contains some excellent scaly necks that work incredibly well against the rest of the dragon. Two necks were chosen and heavily clipped down at the bottom so that they would better blend into the dragon's neck. This was done incrementally, but didn't need to be perfect as any dodgy joins could be fixed with some green stuff later. Once the two necks were lining up, the inside edge of each neck was sawed down, trimmed and filed to create two flat surfaces that could align against each other to create a splayed position for the necks. When it came to the heads, I took some inspiration from the Chaos Dragon found within the Total War Warhammer game. Rather than having two separate heads, I instead wanted to create the effect of a single head that had been split in two before mutating into two heads. This effect would be created by taking the dragon head from the Cryptborn kit and removing the horns and some facial features from one side. For this particular head, the right side was kept intact, whilst the details on the left were smoothed out and flattened. Once the head had been cut down, it was compared against one of the necks. Further trimming and adjustment was needed on both parts until they were lining up correctly. This process was then repeated, but on a spare head taken from the Stormdrake Guard kit. Even though this particular head was slightly smaller than the previous one, this wouldn't be too noticeable. Like before, the details were trimmed and generally flattened, but this time it was the opposite side of the head that was flattened. This effect was continued across the insides of the necks too. Flattening out the details on the inner halves would result in a better surface to add some extra details later on. From here, the necks and heads could finally be attached together and to the torso. With everything fixed into place, the flattened sides of the necks and heads faced each other. While the split neck and two heads were a good start, there were other chaotic mutations that could be added, such as spikes. These were mostly sourced from the same Hydra kit that supplied the necks, as well as repurposing a few of the horns cut away from the dragon heads. These spikes were clipped, trimmed, and glued across the neck and tail. While some of these were quite precariously placed, they would be reinforced somewhat later on. Nothing says chaos more than multiple eyes, and these would be added across the head and upper neck. Eye sockets were created by drilling variously sized shallow holes, which allowed ball bearings of matching sizes to be superglued into them, creating the eyes. To help build up the torn neck effect, whilst also creating support for some sculpting later, some lengths of 1mm plastic rod were attached to the lower part of the neck. But first, more drilling was done. 1mm holes were drilled into opposite sides of the necks before gluing a couple of lengths of 1mm plastic rod at an angle so that it spanned across the neck. With the heads, necks and eyes prepped, sculpting could begin. The goal here was to create the appearance of the flesh mutating and knitting back together following the split. This was done by first mixing up a fresh batch of green stuff and rolling it out into thin strands. These were laid out and pressed across the insides of the neck and head. 
Using a combination of rubber-tipped and metal tools, lines and creases were scoured into the putty before additional strands of putty were laid adjacent and across them. These were steadily built up until it created a series of interlocking strands. During this process, I made sure to use a little Vaseline over my tools and fingers. This helps to stop the putty from sticking and generally leaves a smoother finish. Once one side was completed, the putty was allowed to cure. With one side fully cured, it allowed me to proceed with the other side without accidentally smudging my previous work. The exact same process was repeated, as well as filling in a few of the gaps that had been left behind after attaching the necks. Following this, more strands were wrapped around the plastic rod to create the appearance of the flesh being stretched between the necks. With the green stuff around the necks and heads finished, it was allowed to cure fully. The next step in building the Chaos Dragon was to add the wings. While the wings that came with the kit were already pretty ragged looking, this effect could be pushed further. This was done by drilling holes into the membrane of the wings using various sizes of drill bit. These were smoothed out and expanded a little using a rounded file before finishing them off with more spikes. These were sourced from the same places as before and were attached to the hand part of the wing. The various spikes across the model were cemented into place with a small amount of putty at the base that was sculpted into folds of skin. Similarly, more green stuff was added around the holes in the wings to give the appearance of scar tissue. Once these steps were completed, they were glued to the dragon. The next task was to tackle the rider. Normally, this would be Jonas Cryptborn, but it would instead be replaced with the Eternus Torso from the Slaves to Darkness range. These parts are left over should you decide to build your kit as a mounted Chaos Lord. To attach this new torso, I just dry-fitted Jonas' legs into the saddle before gluing Eternus' torso over the top. This allowed me to ensure that the torso could fit properly against both the legs and saddle before it was glued into place. From here, I could continue to build Eternus as per the instructions. Which brought me back to adding the final touches to the dragon. With all the sculpting complete, I could attach the shoulder armor that came with the original kit, but not before removing the strips of parchment first. In addition to this, a leftover torso piece from the Demon Prince kit was glued to the dragon's chest. Finally, a Marauder Horseman shield and chains were added, along with a cluster of skulls. This just helped to further that chaotic appearance of the dragon. From here, all I was left to do was to create some miniature holders and paint everything up. But before we take a look at the finished model, if you are enjoying this video so far, then please do leave me a like, and as only about half of you are currently watching are subscribed, I'd be extremely grateful if you would consider hitting the subscribe button too. That way you don't miss out on future videos like this. Anyway, let's see that finished Chaos Dragon. And here we have the completed Chaos Lord mounted on a dragon. When it came to the paint scheme, I took inspiration from the colours of the original miniature, combined with a few colour ideas taken from the Total Wars Chaos Dragon. You can find all the kits and tools used to make this model in the description below, and if you have any suggestions for other old world updates you'd like to see me tackle, then please do leave me those in the comments below. But before I go, I just want to thank my Patreon supporters and channel members, the people who are responsible for keeping these videos coming. Especially my Pouch of Dead Animal Bits tier and above supporters, who are Andrew Consol, Axel Jonsson, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Ian, Immaterial Creations, Maciej Savitsky, Matt Brower, Morgan, Mr. Grimm, Pale Juice, Hops of Corn, Ryan Little, Swedsman, and Tim. And my Sergeant Level channel members, who are Dare, Trooper Geo, Mr. Jared Hess 95, David, John Gibbs, The Sire Acquired, Philip Poya, Nonington Paints, Mark Taylor, and Whale Tussler. If you're interested in supporting me too, you can hit the join button below or find a link to my Patreon in the description. Supporters get a whole host of benefits, including ad free access to my videos, sneak peeks, a private Discord channel, and exclusive merchandise. So until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.